So what do you guys think of Indian food? I love Indian food. I never Delicious. had a bad Indian meal. I've had a bad Indian meal. I don't know what you're talking about, but it is good food in general. Well, the reason I'm asking is that, you know, we were thinking about what we should do our next podcast on, and then everyone said, have you had the Indian food here in London? And I thought, well, no, we haven't really done that. We've been eating, you know, cooking our own food, preparing it, going to the grocery store, and we've been eating a heck of a lot of pizza too, but not Indian food. Yep. So this week, we decided to check out three Indian places. And... I think you're going to like this one. Welcome to the Elliot Confidential Podcast. I'm Aaron Elliot, joined here by Aiden Christopher hey. Elliot. How are you guys hey, doing? Hey, we're doing good. good. We're doing good. Let's How's your week? My week was very nice. My week was, was very. You had chillax. finals, didn't you? My final project is finished. I am chillaxing, waxing, maxing all. You're good. not totally done Shooting though. Shooting some b-balls outside of the school. Yeah, right. Anyway, you so, have one project to do still. I, I do have one more project to do, but I don't even count it as a project. I like to believe it doesn't exist because it's <laughs> so small. But once it's done, then I'm officially done with this semester. But Lucky you. I'm just ready to chill out. I thought you were already chillaxing. Is that different from chilling out? Chilling out is one level higher. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I had an insanely busy week, and I'm still working. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been... Yeah. I'm trying busy to solve the world's problems. <laughs> um, before I get to the Indian food, though, and I'm, I'm starting to get hungry just as I talk about this, um, let's do this week's question because uh, we've been getting some really good comments lately, and I'll, I'll read some of yours at the end of this podcast. But our uh, question of the week is, what is the best street food that you've ever had in your travels? And it doesn't have to be Indian, and it doesn't have to be like a distant trip. It could just be into town or you know wherever you are and it can't be something you saw on netflix it, yeah no it doesn't count if you saw it on netflix you <laughs> have to have actually eaten it so best street food you've ever had in your travels and it can be a staycation so let's walk over we're actually at london bridge station and we're going to walk over to borough market which is the location of our first indian street food place it is called horn okay please i'm now making this up it's called horn i don't even know what that means but the food was Pretty incredible. We went there on a Saturday morning, like early, like late morning we went there and it was wall to wall with people. And we had chana masala. Yeah, we did. We had chana masala and we also got dosas. Yep. And what did you think I'm, of the chana masala? All right, what did you think of the chana masala? He couldn't eat it because it had coriander in it. Aiden doesn't like oh, coriander. Oh, that's right. Poor um, I didn't, yeah. couldn't eat the food. You know what, on the internet, it's you're so ridiculed for this, because I was watching a video about foods that you're, if you don't like it, then you're a child, and one of them was cilantro, and he said, guys, grow up, it doesn't taste like soap. It's an actual uh, ethnic uh, seasoning for food, and I know, it's but good. What and you then, didn't explain, uh, though, is we, that you, ha you actually have, you're a super taster, well, so it tastes like soap to you. Well, okay, I, I went to the comments section of this yeah. video, and the comment section were like, don't hate coriander or your baby changes DNA, which is true. If you don't like coriander and if people tell you like coriander, well, you're going to have to really go really deep and change your DNA because that's the reason why you don't like right, it. It's exactly. down to your DNA. So for me, the reason I don't like cilantro is because I can taste a specific chemical because I was born with a genetic attribute that allowed me to do that. So what I would say is if you're going to an Indian restaurant and you have this or any other allergy, and they're very nice, they actually at this place they asked us if we had any allergies, um, let them know that you don't want coriander and then they'll be sure to put it in. <laughs> we actually we asked That's them not what they to put did. it in and they still yeah, did. They put it in anyway. You know, and another thing about Indian food is that they're very accommodating. Um, every Indian restaurant that I've been to, including these, have been very accommodating, especially towards vegetarians and vegans, because India has a very high population. That's true. And yeah. also, they, they have weirder dietary restrictions. Like, I was talking to my uncle-in-law, who's from Nepal, and there are some people who are just like, that they're going to fast from onions, for example, which is ridiculous. Like, why do you fast particularly from onions? I don't know. But nonetheless, well, they're very people have their open the, to that. The way they eat, that's just how they are. No, I don't know. I found the people at this place were very nice too, but the crowds were just unbelievable. If you go to Borough Market, stay away on the weekends because everyone goes there on the weekends. And it is literally wall to wall. Yeah. Like there is no place to move. 
Um, but the food's really good. So if you can go like during the week to um, Horn, okay, please, that's good. Let's walk over across the Thames and to a place called the Tiffin Box, which is technically not street food, because it's, it's close enough. but it's a restaurant, but it's close enough. It, it's not very fancy. You go up to the counter and you order, and then you sit down with your food, and they give it to you like in, in paper, like a paper container. Yeah, it was a paper plate or something like yeah, that. Yeah. It was nice though, because the thing is, it's that was really, the food we had. Yeah, yeah, it was, it, so was, good, yeah. it was, you know, it's very simple. It's just rice, and then, you know, they have the chana masala or the dal or very whatever well else. Not very, very well seasoned. It's well seasoned and it's very simple. And so you kind of, you know, you mix it, you eat it. There's, there's nothing really special about it. It just takes. Did you guys know that Indian food is actually the most popular food in India and Nepal? but mostly India. Wow. What about Bangladesh? I don't know, is Bangla, what is Bangladesh? It's a country. It's a country, oh, yes. It's, I'm American. It's like Indian food. Yes. I'm American. Bangladeshi Sorry. food, maybe. Um, I'm glad you brought this up though, Aiden, because Indian food is a big thing here in the UK. And the cynics would say it's because they don't have any good food here, so they, they, well, they that, want that something is why. spicy. They, I'm the cynics. to have uh, Indian food. But there are more than 10,000 Indian restaurants in London, according to an article I read just in Newsweek, which must be true, oh just in London. They call them traditional curry houses. And also, did you know that Indian food has the highest number of Michelin stars after French cuisine? Oh, wow. Oh, well, okay, after French cuisine. After, of course, after. Okay, so they have, the, the, second course, most, but the, they have the second most Michelin stars. I would say if I were in the Michelin committee, you know, I was just making tires all day, and then I went to these restaurants, yeah, I, w I can understand. That's not how it works. They're yeah, no, making no, they're separate. They're, they're, separate. They're, they're separate. They're they're separate. They're part of the same company, but they're separate. Michelin, they were making guides because they were, you know, do, doing tires for people that were going all around Europe. But they still have it like separate. But it's part of the same entity. Tiffin Box was really good. I that was probably the best Indian food that I'd had up to that point. Yeah. Here, it was very spicy. Yes. But not overly spicy. And the the guys, they were really nice too. Felt it, very authentic. It felt very. We were sitting there and everyone there was Indian. There were no Brits there. It was all it's Indian It's a good people. sign. That's usually a pretty good sign. Oh no, British, uh, Indian people are British. It just depends, you know, historically. Part of the Commonwealth. Yes. Um, the British next place that we went to though was, had the most beautiful view. It, it was street food right next to the Tower of London. And it was the, we'll get to the name in a minute, but it had a very nice view of the Tower Bridge. Now that's the bridge that everyone always says is the London yeah. Bridge. It's not. It's the Tower Bridge, the big ornate one with the big. It's a drawbridge. Yeah, and it's street food. It's a it's a food truck. I have it's a, basically a food truck, and it's called Aaron. Tell us what the name is. It it was curry on nonstop, and the non is spelled N A A N. Yeah. And the curry is spelled well like curry, right? But yeah. it's curry on. It's like keep calm, like, keep calm, carry on. Keep calm and carry on. And uh, the food, this was the most expensive street food that we had because probably of the location. Mm. And it was, you know, it was okay, but the view was spectacular. Yeah, they had these, uh, what do you call them, samosas? Dosas. Dosas, no, 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 those weren't dosas. Dosas are the, are the ones with a thin, it's like potato. These were samosas because they were like more triangle shaped. And they weren't as spicy. They were probably spiced for a German audience, I would say. And there were a lot of <laughs> Germans there. Oh man. You know, they don't like things too spicy. Oh, this, is, this is too spicy. Nine, kind, Nine. kind spice. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> yeah, but I honestly thought that the food there was, you know, it was definitely not the same audience as Tiffin Box. Tiffin Box felt very authentic. Yeah. It felt like real food. This place, I don't know, it kind of felt like, uh, it, I don't know, it felt like grocery store Indian food, whereas like you get the spice from a jar and then you add the beans and then maybe you make some rice and, and then you deep fry lots of things. It's, so it's kind of like, yeah. it's fair food. What did you think, Aiden? This didn't have any coriander in it, so you could eat it. It was good. It was delicious. I ate it. I know, you did. I did eat it. Yeah. In front of Tower Bridge. Yeah, pay for the view. Pay for the view. The doses were good. This, the, Aaron says they're samosas. I think they're doses. They were delicious. You say samosa, I say dosa. I like mm. doses better than samosas. Yep, I think it's I think I think it's our our inner Irish because you know we did the DNA test for Irish 
those dosas, they were filled to the brim with yeah, potatoes. potatoes. Yeah. No, yes. that's uh, dosas are filled with potatoes. Yes, yes. true. They but samosas, samosas are filled with potatoes and beans. Yeah, this one was just potatoes. Potatoes for us. Potato. Okay, I learned a lot about Indian food while I was here, and that is if you want to get a good meal and not pay too much, most of the Indian food was probably 20 to 30 percent less expensive than comparable oh, yeah. food yeah. here, and it was very spicy. Well, well, very well spiced. So you can you can uh, you know taste actually what you're eating. Yeah, you you kind of have two options in London. You get food with no seasoning mm -hmm. that costs like 50 to 100 dollars, or you get very heavily spiced food. It doesn't cost you anything. Well, you, it does. Maybe it doesn't cost you anything, but since you didn't pay for it, you're right. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, it did, I, no, I forgot. But it's less expensive though. I forgot you. You were paying for it. Yeah. You know? Sometimes you forget. Well, it's okay. Next time you can pay if you want to. Yeah. So uh, what was the? What do you want to talk <laughs> about after this? Oh uh, yeah. No, I think that um, the the food scene here it's 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 odd. It's really odd. Like if you go to a really authentic Indian place, and when I say authentic, I mean like. East Side, North Thames, you know that area we walked by in order to get to the pizza? Oh, yeah. Like with all of the uh, Arabic neighborhoods, the one with the, the mosque. You know, now I saw a lot of reasonably priced Indian food there, but there are some other places like more Western London, like uh, Northern of the Thames, uh, not really South of the Thames, I don't understand why. There was only one place that we went to South of the Thames, and that was Horn Okay Please. Um, and that was okay, but it was still expensive and they didn't give us a lot. So I would say be careful and you know the best priced restaurant food is definitely going to be Indian uh, yeah. in, in our experience, but we haven't tried anything uh, really else other than uh, pizza. pizza. Well, no, we've, we've been trying a lot of the food here, but uh, oh. just but I think Chinese food might be cheaper. Oh, dude, it's a Chinese food episode next week. We have one more week in London. <laughs> Let's see your comments from last week. We got a lot of great comments from you guys and we love reading your comments in the podcast. RJD says, uh, we were, you know, the question was, what's the best museum you've been to? And RJD said the Imperial War Museum in London, uh, who, and I don't know RJD, I can't tell if you're a man or woman, so I'm just gonna say RJD said, I'm not a fan of the redo they did a few years ago, but I, it was still spectacular. We actually, after reading RJD's comment, we went to the Imperial War Museum. What did you guys think? I really liked it, you know, I thought that the section on World War II and especially the uh, parts on Japan were very interesting. They had a lot of Japanese propaganda and a lot of just general propaganda. I could see Aiden That's reading the kanji. Yes. Yeah. The could kanji. You, that, could, you, that read, was could you read the propaganda? Uh, uh, well, they didn't use any hiragana and uh, they only used like very intricate symbols that were not simplified yet. They didn't use the simplified alphabet back then, so it was very hard. I, could, I, I read the German propaganda and it was... You know. Yep. And the, uh, but I couldn't read the Russian propaganda. Anyway. Uh, bah, bah. What about the? What about the, the, read the Russian propaganda? What about the British propaganda? Um. Oh yeah. Well, everyone has propaganda, right? I mean, yeah. they had American propaganda too. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uncle yeah. Sam Every needs you. I want you. That kind of thing. Once you're at war, you gotta use propaganda. That's right. Well. Propaganda. Barbara says I've been to so many museums in my world travels, but enjoyed the Hunterian Museum at the Royal College of Surgeons in London. Have been to London so many times. I have been to all of the usual ones in London, plus museums in other countries I've been to. Um, we tried to go to the Royal College of Surgeons, but it was closed. I think they're renovating it. But we actually visited a similar, this is a, a surgical museum, so they have all kinds of things like, you know, pickled body parts and surgical tools that are pretty interesting. There's a museum called the Mutter in uh, Philadelphia the College of Physicians that we went to. I don't know if you guys oh, remember I that. I remember that. That was when that building collapsed. That's right. That's right. With your friend. Yeah, yeah. That was crazy. But I, I remember that in Philadelphia. That was like the second time we went. Yeah. yeah. Although it has the two dots over the over the U, so it would be called Mutta, as in mother. Mutta. 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 Kathy V says, I love visiting collections in museums and libraries. We see as many as we can, from the tiniest to the grandest when we travel. If I thought on it, I'm sure others would come to mind, but the one that came to mind was the Frick Collection in New York City. And the reason I enjoyed it so much was the compact size in comparison to so many other museums, but every room was filled with masterworks. 
I've been to the Frick Museum, but you guys haven't. So when we're in New York the next time, we're going to have to check out the Frick. Frick. Frick, we missed it. Yeah. We got to get to that frickin' museum. Okay. I was just waiting for you guys to say something like that. Yes. We also need to go to Omega Mart. That's besides the point, though. Let's, that's not even in New York. I know, but it's very cool. <laughs> Let's just keep going. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> our question, again, is what's the best street food that you've had in your travels? Please leave a comment. You know where to do it, and we'll read your comments in our next podcast. I'll read your comments. Actually. You want to read them next I'm time? Gonna re- I'm going to read them too. With okay. You. I don't usually do that, but th- this next time, guys, when you put in a comment, just know that I'll read it. I know that you're going to get more comments because people. They people, want you to read. People really care about my opinion, so let us wait for all the <laughs> I'm sure comments. Sure, they do. And uh, I'll see you all next time. We will see you all next time. I don't well, know after eating all that Indian food, uh, I actually am feeling very full. I mean, we ate so much Indian food. Lots this of it. week. Yeah, lots of it. And I wanted to just ask you, is do you have a particular dish that you, you like, Aaron? Oh, we're continuing this. Aaron, uh, For me, my favorite Indian food, oh, like uh, it's all of it, but basically chana masala or anything dal, like that's my favorite. Yeah. How about you, Aiden? For me, it is like, it's just any curry with rice, honestly, because I could just devour curry with rice. Yeah. And it's well seasoned. It doesn't really matter whether it's potatoes or fake meat or um, garbanzo beans. Just that and rice, bro, I'm set. You know, I'm thinking we might check out an Indian place for dinner tonight. I don't know. Mm. Anyway, uh, I'm glad you joined us for this episode. We have one more week left in London, and we'll probably end up doing more food. We're going to check out some more museums, too. Mm-hmm. So no telling what we're going to have in store for you, but I'm glad you joined us, guys. Thanks for being here. Thank we'll you. We'll see you next time, all right? Yep. See you soon. All right, ciao. bye. See you. Ciao, ciao.